Good morning. This past week has been a week of upheaval all across our country and even in our own city. I'm so glad that you've joined us to worship together online this morning because in times like this, we need to spend time in God's presence, time in the scriptures, time listening for the voice of God. It's our prayer that you would sense God's spirit guiding you this morning as we worship together online. Thanks for joining us. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest without you. I fall apart You're the one That guides my heart Lord, I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. When sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found, is where you are. And where you drives out fear. Do a thought experiment with me for a second. Let's just say that all of us are a mixture of love and of fear. And depending upon the circumstance, we tend towards one side or the other. When we feel loved, we're at our best. 
We're open. We welcome other people. We're concerned about the welfare of others. But when we're fearful, we're more likely to be closed off to other people. Sometimes we retreat and we keep to ourselves. Other times we get aggressive. Often when we're fearful, we become anxious and agitated. We tend to focus less on others and more on ourselves. And we become preoccupied with preserving everything that we are afraid of losing. Could that be true? That all of us are this mixture of love and fear? Biblical scholar Walter Brueggemann delivered an outstanding sermon 10 years ago that suggests that it is true. That all of us live with this mixture of love and fear. And we oscillate between the two quite often, even in the same day. His sermon has caused me to think. And it's helped me this week as I've tried to process the upheaval that we are seeing right before our eyes in our country. And it's helped me as I've tried to articulate a response this morning. In our text for this morning, in John's first epistle, he says that perfect love casts out fear. Now John is obviously talking about God's unconditional love that's displayed towards us. He's talking about this never-ending love of God that's revealed in Jesus Christ. It's a love for you, and it's a love for all of our neighbors. In the Gospels, people's lives are completely transformed as they open themselves to this love. They are freed from everything that's chains them. They find courage to surrender. They stop living selfishly, and they start living for others. And they live with renewed hope. Jesus is reminding people of this perfect love throughout the Gospels and everything he does. But Jesus also reminds people of the things that hinder them from receiving that love. And over and over again in the Gospels, we hear Jesus saying the same thing. Don't be afraid. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Fear not. Why? Because fear restrains us. It hinders us from receiving God's love. Perfect love casts out fear, John says. But consider its reverse, says Walter Brueggemann. Perfect fear casts out love. Because when we live out of fear, we are nowhere near our best. You know that. Think about the times in your life when you have been at your worst. Times when you lashed out at someone or you did something that you regret. Chances are you were afraid, weren't you? Afraid of losing something. Afraid of losing control. Afraid of change. Fear brings out our worst. Perfect fear casts out love. And we've seen that play out right before our eyes over these past several weeks. For weeks now, the COVID-19 pandemic has evoked widespread fear, and that's made all of us more selfish. We fought over toilet paper and hand sanitizer. We read about people who called the police every time they saw somebody violating a stay-at-home order. Or on the other end of the spectrum, we read about elected officials who seem to suggest that the health of our economy was more valuable than the sanctity of human life. Why? Because fear makes us focus only on ourselves and not the well-being of others. Perfect fear casts out love. And over the past several weeks, we've heard story after story about injustices that our African-American sisters and brothers have experienced. Videos on the internet have showed us Ahmaud Arbery being shot while jogging. There's a clip up there of a white woman calling 911 on an African-American man who's birdwatching in Central Park. And then we saw that video of a police officer kneeling on the neck of George Floyd as he gasped for breath and then died. 
I don't know anybody who saw these videos and felt good about them. Videos like that create fear inside all of us. And fear makes us do bad things. Sometimes we act out on our aggression, as we've seen in peaceful protests that have sadly turned violent in cities across the country, including our own. Sometimes we're aggressive in our words, and we point the finger at others, and we get self-righteous, and we tell everyone else what they're doing wrong. In my experience, that usually doesn't help. When we're fearful, we don't live in love. Several observations here. First, let's just say it. Racism is sinful. I mean, think about how different we all are. Africans, Asians, Anglos, male, female, dark hair, light hair, no hair. We read in the Bible that God created each one of us in God's image. God loves diversity. That's clear. Just look around. Like an artist, God has made all of us in such different ways for a reason. And any time we reject someone because of their skin color, that's a slap in the face to God. Second, violence is never the answer. The great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. believed that the way to bring societal change was through peaceful, nonviolent protest. Jesus himself teaches that if someone hits us on the right cheek, we're to turn the other cheek. And we've seen thousands of peaceful protesters doing just that, holding prayer vigils, creating artwork, finding creative ways to challenge racism in our country. And quite frankly, it's been beautiful to watch. It's sad that the violence of a few has marred these peaceful protests, because violence is never the answer. Violence may bring a short-term sense of control to a situation, but over time, resentment always builds up, and it just perpetuates a cycle of violence. Third, our God is a God who believes in justice, and that means injustice needs to be remedied. Now, I'm grateful to have grown up in a country where the rule of law, for the most part, is very, very trustworthy. We've got police men and women in our church, and I am so grateful for the service that they've given, for the ways they put their life on the line for the common good. And I'm convinced that most of our country's law enforcement are in their profession to protect the common good. But we have seen a few who have betrayed their calling. Just like we've read about pastors who betrayed their callings. We've heard over the past several years story after stories of priests and pastors who have abused their power in disgusting ways. But do I stop going to church? No. Because I still believe in the kingdom of God and the church's call to embody it. And in the same way, I still believe in liberty and justice for all and our law enforcement's call to protect that. But when we see evidence that suggests our law enforcement officers or our politicians or even our pastors have neglected their call to defend liberty and justice for all, justice needs to be served. Our country is on fire right now, literally and metaphorically. And I'll be honest, sometimes the challenges that we face seem so widespread and so systemic, it's just overwhelming to me. I certainly don't have all the answers. But I have been reminded of 1 John 4.18 this week. Perfect love casts out fear. And for me, that's the best place to start. Because when we live out of that perfect love, God transforms us. And then God uses us to transform this world. We listen to others. We seek to understand other people's perspectives. We give all people the dignity that comes from being created in the image of God. Black, white, red, or brown. Pastor, police officer, politician, or press secretary. But that's not what we're seeing right now. Instead, we're seeing whites yelling at blacks and blacks yelling at whites. 
We see Republicans threatening Democrats and Democrats threatening Republicans. Rhetoric is on the rise and lives are being lost. We are a society filled with fear. And perfect fear casts out love. And that's not going to change until we are changed. And so maybe what we need most right now is a chance to recalibrate ourselves. Think about it. Where are you in this whole love-fear continuum? What do you fear most right now? Or how is fear affecting the way that you are living? What would it look like for you to live out of love? God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to remind us that we are all loved desperately by God, just as God desperately loves all of our neighbors. And Jesus makes it clear that when we embrace that love, when we believe in it, when we live as if it's true, we are transformed. Paul says that those who live by God's spirit live in love. And God's love allows them to have joy and peace, and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But the fears that govern our lives, they keep us from that. So may we all, together, lean on God's love this week. May we trust in God's love. May we allow God to move us out of fear and into his joyful love. And may God show us ways to live in that love. Because when we do live out of God's love, however small act it may be, we are part of God's healing process for our land. And that's what our land needs most right now. Will you pray with me, please? Loving God, these have been confusing days for all of us. Forgive us for the times when we have allowed our fears to control us. For the times we have been slow to listen and quick to speak. For the times we've been judgmental. For the times that we haven't loved our neighbor as ourselves. Lord, I pray that you would help us to live out of your love, that we would embrace the love of Jesus Christ for us and for all people, and that you would show us ways to live in that love this week, and that as we do, we would be part of your healing in this land. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning want to uh, remind you of a few things that are coming up um, this week. So tonight, our regathering team will be meeting to um, discuss the possibility of some upcoming outdoor worship gatherings for us. Um, we'll continue to iron out the details, and we'll, as soon as we iron out those details, we'll have more information to share with you as well. But until then, we'll be continuing our online presence with our Wednesday night Bible study this Wednesday. Um, the, the Zoom meeting will open up at 6.30 p.m. and for a time of fellowship and Bible study begin at 7 p.m. Students will meet tonight via Instagram Live at 5.30 p.m. and also on Wednesday at 6 p.m. via Zoom. So I uh, hope to see you all there. Um, also, we'll be continuing our uh, Sunday school classes um, for both children and adults as well. Also want to thank everyone who came out last weekend for our food drive. We collected over one ton of food to go to Goochland Cares, which is outstanding. It was one of their larger donations that they've ever received. Um, so we're, we're grateful that um, for you all that came out and supported us in that as well. Um, also, we hope that you'll continue to support the ministry here at Goochland Baptist Church by mailing in your offering. Uh, giving it, giving it online or um, going by the church office and dropping in the mail slot in the side door. Um, also, we know that even though we're talking about online, going back into live in-person gatherings outside, 
Um, we know that some of you may not feel comfortable with that um, at this point in time. So we'll be continuing our online presence as well. So please, if you feel uncomfortable um, or not safe, please continue to worship from home. Um, wherever you are this week, we, we're praying for you. And um, God bless. Oh God, how I